When we study the seerah of our Prophet ﷺ and the advent of Islam among Sahaba, it seems as if Islam at that time was more simple in terms of studying and applying it. The preceding scholars, rahmatullah alayhim, provide us with such vast resources to studying the deen. Why does it seem that the practice of Islam of our Prophet's time was so much simpler than the exponentially deep resources we must use today and study Islamic practice? It's a really good question. For common people, you're students of knowledge. For common people, Islam is, should be very simple. For aqidah, if you really understand ikhlas, that should be enough. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ صَمَدْ لَمْ يَدِدْ وَلَمْ يُرَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوَانْ أَحَدْ That, our, our mutakarimun say that that negates the eight types of kufr. There's eight types of kufr. The قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ It negates تَعَدُّدِيَّ and إِنْقِسَامْ That God is more than one or that He's composite. You know, that, 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 that He has parts. And then اللَّهُ uh, صَمَدْ that negates naqs and aib. It negates deficiency and defect. Lam yirid wa lam yulad. That negates illa and ma'luliya. It negates cause and effect. God is, is not the cause of anything in a causative sense. He creates things, but there's not a cause and effect relationship. Because with cause and effect, they have to be related. Right? In other words, when you cause something to happen, there's a... There's, there's a, a relationship between the thing affected and the cause. With Allah, there's no causal relationship. He, he's, he's, not, he's transcendent in that way. Like if, if, I, if I make that sound, I have to have, there's a causal relationship that connects me with the creation. Allah has no causal connection in that way. But he, he brought everything into existence. خَارِقُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ خَارِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ So, so that negates illa and ma'luliya. And then, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفْوَانَ حَدْ It negates shabih wa nadir. It negates any likeness or opposite. And so those are the eight points. If you understand those really well, that, that's, that will suffice to, to get to Jannah. Um, and, and obviously you have to know the prophets are all true and, and so... Um, I mean, I'm simplifying things, but... But that, that is enough. The Prophet said, Man qala la ilaha illallah, dakhal al jannah. If you say that, you'll get into paradise. Believing there's nothing worthy of worship except the one true. La ma'bud bi haqqin siwa Allah. There's nothing worshipped in truth. Because many things are worshipped other than Allah. But in truth, nothing is worshipped uh, except Allah. In truth. Bi haqqin. La ma'bud bi haqqin illallah. Um, and then the, the akhlaq of the Prophet is not difficult. Be good to people, speak truthfully, don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat. Ten commandments. Ta'alu atnu ma harma rabbukum alaykum. Right? Qul ta'alu atnu ma harma rabbukum alaykum. Come and let me tell you what your Prophet prohibited, what uh, your Lord prohibited from you to do. Allah tu shuriku bi shay'a. Right? Wa bil wari daini ihsana. Wa la taqturu awladukum min imraq. Nahnu na rasukukum wa iyahum. Wa la taqarbu zina. Wa la taqarbu al fawahisha ma zahara minha wa ma batan. Huh? Right? That's the basic akhlaq of the of the of the Quran is is the Ten Commandments. Right? That's not difficult, that's easy. So the, that aspect, but if you want to know why it's complicated, because language is complicated. Because language bears a lot of meanings. Because when you get into religion, religion is dangerous. And if you leave people just to, to read these things and think they can understand them without having the depth of knowledge to really understand it, then you have what's going on in the Muslim world right now. Where every Tom, Dick, and Abdullah is running around chopping somebody's head off because they disagree with them. So this is a problem. One example. Any hadith that is related the Prophet speaks with different voices. Sometimes he speaks as a Qadi. Sometimes he speaks as a Mufti. Sometimes he speaks as a Hakim. Sometimes he speaks as a, a Nasih, giving advice. The, the Mufti, the, the Mujtahid has to differentiate. One example of that. The Prophet ﷺ, when Hind said, uh, Abu Sufyan Rajudun uh, uh, Shahihun. Right? He's, he's, he's withholding. He doesn't give me what I need. The Prophet said, Take from his wealth 
bil ma'roof, take from his wealth uh, what's a custom of your socioeconomic status amongst the Quraysh. I mean, these are all implied. That's what he meant. Bil ma'roof means a woman of your stature in Mecca, take what you need according to, to what women like you in this society, the urf. Abu Hanifa said that that's mutlaq, so a woman can take uh, the wealth of her husband uh, when, when, if he's not giving it to her, and she, she doesn't have to tell him. Imam Malik said, no, he's, he's acting as a qadi there. So Abu Hanifa was saying he's acting as a mufti. Imam Malik said, no, he's acting as a qadi. So the woman has to go to the qadi to get that permission. Which one is right? Allahu anam. I'm Maliki, you're Hanafi, my wife can't take my money, your wife can. <laughs> so, you know. 